Wright's original main hatch was heavy. It had a teak frame and teak trim attached to a plywood base. One evening, as I was leaving the boat, I pulled on the hatch handle to close the hatch, and the entire aft end of the hatch, along with the handle, came off in my hand. It was definitely time for a new hatch. We've replaced the original teak hatch on Star White with a three-quarter inch thick acrylic hatch. It lets a lot of light into the boat and requires no maintenance. We also replaced the lower drop board with a piece of three-quarter inch acrylic. Again, to let more light in and also when things are closed up, we can look out and see what's going on. After building a teak frame for the acrylic to sit on top of, we then laid down butyl tape on the edges and then put the acrylic down on top of the butyl tape, running our fasteners through the oversized and countersunk screw holes. It makes for a very, very solid hatch. This particular acrylic that we are using is a half an inch thick. Here you can see a portion of the lower frame that the acrylic is actually attached to. And as I said, we used butyl tape to attach it, the acrylic that is, to the frame. And then we ran our fasteners down through. Here's a piece of the acrylic that we used to fabricate our lower drop board. This is the view of the bottom of the original main hatch from inside. There was no light coming through all that wood. This is what our main companionway looks like with the acrylic drop board in place and our new acrylic main hatch in the closed position. It doesn't change much when we open it. It's almost as bright with the hatch closed as it is with it open. We're very, very happy with this acrylic main hatch. It just brightens the interior of the boat so much. In working with acrylic and building the main hatch, there were a few secrets that we were taught. One is to countersink the screws and also to over drill the hole size for the screw so the screw is not putting any stress running in an outward direction as it goes through the acrylic. We spend a lot of time talking about improvements and changes that we've made to Star White, but we very seldom talk about how to make those changes. I want to just give a couple of hints for working with acrylic. The most important thing I can tell you is get the proper drill bit for drilling acrylic. This is an acrylic bit here, and you'll see that it has a very, very steep tip with a 60 degree angle. This is designed specifically for working with acrylic. This is the standard drill bit, which you and I and everyone else has in our toolkit. You can see how very, very flat that tip section is when compared with the one designed for drilling through the acrylic. Once you've drilled the hole in the acrylic, then it's important to countersink the hole so that the screw head does not put unnecessary pressure on the acrylic, causing a crack. Countersink is designed to taper at the same angle as the head of the faster you're putting in. Countersinks are also available in different diameters. You will need to get one that is the appropriate diameter for the fastener that you're choosing to install. Acrylic can expand as much as a sixteenth of an inch when it's warm. So you need to drill your hole slightly bigger in diameter than the fastener that you're going to be putting in. This is the original teak hatch from the factory that came aboard Star White. I believe it's the same hatch that's used on all West sails, regardless of size. It's got some uh, nice bronze hinges on it. It's got a piece of clear acrylic in the center and covered with these teak slats. It looks really shippy and salty. Frankly, it is. It's well built. It's a dovetail construction. Unfortunately, over the years, the bedding underneath the acrylic has failed, and so it leaked a lot.
Additionally, this hatch weighs somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds. If it came down on your head, you knew it had come down on your head. Uh, as far as gasketing goes, there was this uh, rubber gasket that was just simply glued to the bottom edge of the frame. There is a uh, flange that went up inside here on the hull of the boat to help seal things. All in all, it wasn't a bad hatch, but there's a lot of newer technology available out there now. Hence, we made the switch over to the Lumar aluminum hatch. We replaced the original teak and acrylic hatch that the West Cell came with with this Lumar size 60 medium profile hatch. It lets in a lot more light and it's a lot less maintenance. We chose the Lumar medium profile hatch because it has half inch thick acrylic and the seal and the acrylic are both owner replaceable. Additionally, it has locking handles and the complete hatch, including the lower frame, weighs only 17 pounds. That's 11 pounds less than just the lid on our original teak hatch. Our hatch that we installed up in the Fort Peak lets in a significant amount of light. It makes for a very, very bright and airy space up here. This hatch can be left in what they call the vent position, which allows the hatch to be left open Oh, I'd say that's probably about a half an inch. Rain can't get in, but air can circulate through the boat. In order to make the hatch fit, because they come in pre-made sizes, it was necessary to trim down the opening very slightly. We did that with pieces of teak on all four sides, just shimming the opening down a little bit so that the hatch fit in correctly. 